Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are working on solving combined inequalities. So this is like inequalities beyond the basics, or kind of like a second lesson to that first one that we talked about, inequalities. So basically what an inequality, a combined inequality is, is when you have two inequalities and they're joined by and or or. Here's an example of a conjunction. This is an inequality, two inequalities joined together by and. So the example here is that x is greater than 2. I've gone ahead and graphed that on this number line. Notice the open circle at the point 2 because x is greater than 2, not equal to it. And then here we have x is less than 6. Again, we've highlighted everything to the left of the point 6, and because this is x is less than or equal to 6, we also have a solid filled in line at the point 6, as you can see right there. Now, the conjunction is saying it has to be both of these things. It has to be x greater than 2 and x less than or equal to 6. So what our conjunction would look like, and I've gone ahead and gone and been clever, red and yellow is orange, so there we have it. So this is the conjunction x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 6. It's everything that is both a solution to the first inequality and the second inequality. That's how conjunctions work. They have to be both equation, both inequalities solved together. All right? And so we would graph it like this. It's every point in between 2 and 6. It includes the point 6, but not the point 2. So and that would be our solution. Now, a disjunction is joined by the word or. So it can be one inequality or another inequality, and both are part of a solution. So x is greater than 3 would be graphed as shown here with the point of 3, an open circle, because x does not actually equal 3. It's just everything greater than 3. And then we would have this second inequality that x is less than or equal to 0. So notice again the filled in circle at 0 and then everything shaded to the left there to represent everything less than 0 is part of this inequality. Now at the end our disjunction will look like this. x is greater than 3 or less than or equal to 0. So anything is a solution as you see here that would satisfy either of these inequalities either greater than 3 or less than or equal to 0. So basically the only thing that would not be a solution are the numbers in here, in between 0 and 3, including 3 but not including 0. That would not be a solution. Everything else, anything less than or equal to 0, and anything greater than or equal to 3 over here would all be part of this solution, this disjunction. All right, so that's basically how disjunctions and conjunctions work. Let's show um, how to actually solve and graph a, a disjunction. You'll get a question that looks like this. All right, it would have 5x plus 25 is less than 15 is less than 7x plus 1. And the way that we would set this up is we would set it up as two inequalities. You see over here I've taken just the items on this side, all right? Just those first 5x plus 25 is less than 15. That's a, I've put that over here. Then I've put the second inequality, 15 is less than 7x plus 1, and I've set that over here. I'm going to solve these two separately. Then I'm going to graph them. So I solve inequalities using the order of operations and the property of equality. I'm going to start out by I'm trying to get x completely by itself on one side of the inequality. To do that, I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides of this inequality. That gets rid of the, the number 25 from the left side. And now I will divide both sides by 5, thus giving me x by itself. Notice I had 5 times x, so I had to do the inverse operation to divide by x. I had plus 25, so I did the inverse operation. So just a quick recap on that. Use the inverse operation to isolate your variable. Or in other words, you use the opposite operation to get your variable by itself. So I know that x is less than negative 2. Now I'm going to move over to the other side here and solve 15 is less than 7x plus 1. 
I'll start out by subtracting 1 from both sides of this inequality. That's going to get me with 7x by itself on the right side of the inequality. And 15 minus 1 is 14. I'm going to then say, well, this is 7 times x. So I need to divide both sides by 7 if I'm going to get x by itself. 7x divided by 7 is equal to 1x, in other words, x. And 14 divided by 7 is equal to 2. So I've successfully isolated my variable. x is less than negative 2, and x is less than, or 2 is less than x. Now, 2 is less than x is another way of saying x is greater than 2. We can kind of read it backwards if we want to. So x is every value that's greater than 2, and x is every value that's less than negative 2. So definitely a disjunction. These two don't have any areas that cross. All right. So we would graph it in this way. x is, again, less than negative 2. So that would be on this side, including an open circle for negative 2 and every other number less than that. And x is greater than positive 2. This is written as 2 is less than x. But again, we can read it backwards. Just consider that sign, just get a mirror or something, and, and you would sort of, and it would be backwards. Well, the number 2 would also be backwards. But x is greater than, right? The, the larger side is towards x, so x is greater than positive 2. So again, an open circle at positive 2, and everything on the right side of that selected. And so this is how we solve and graph a disjunction. The same steps would be used to solve a conjunction. All right, you'll be given an inequality like this, a double inequality, and you'll separate it into two sides, solve, and then graph them just like you would normally graph an inequality, except with a conjunction, they'll cross over each other, and you would pick the parts that are solution for both inequalities.